magic, magic, magic and more magic. You know, it was never the custom in Ireland to burn people as witches or wizards. But there was one exception. In 1324, in the town of Kilkenny, a long time before the Black Death, that was, there lived a woman called Alice Kittler, a beautiful woman and a rich woman, which was more important, maybe. Her people were bankers. And because of her good looks and her money, the men were inclined to be attracted to her. She was married four times. But there was one small problem. The husbands weren't inclined to live. All four of them died a short time after they were married to Alice. And of course, naturally enough, the rumours started. <clears throat> there was something worse than human in this. And at the same time, it began to be said that a tall, dark man was seen coming and going to Alice Kittler's house. Art Artisan, they called him. Alice Kittler had a servant. Petronella de Meath, she was called. And of course, she was also supposed to be involved in these dark doings. No, rumour might have stayed rumour and nothing else. Except that on May morning in that year of 1324, a neighbour of Alice Kittler's, living across the street from her, he was woken up before the dawn of day by a strange sound. He sat up in his bed. He thought he heard something outside the window. Lashed it, says he, getting out of the bed. Who's out at this time of the morning? And he went over to the window, looked out, and imagined his surprise when he saw none other than his neighbour, Alice Kittler, with a big broom, and she sweeping, sweeping, sweeping down the street, and all the time muttering something. God knows, they say this is strange. And he listened, and he could hear her words, and they were... To the house of Robert, my son, come all the wealth of Kilkenny town. And she brushed down one side of the street and brushed up the other side all the time, brushing the dust of the street towards her own door. To the house of Robert, my son, come all the wealth of Kilkenny town. Hey, your man, he went back to bed very quickly when he heard that. Many things to think about. Days went on and it began to be noticed that... Certain well-known businesses in Kilkenny went burst, and valuables that people had put safely away began to be missed, and people began to talk, because the only person who seemed to be profiting by all of this was Robert Hitler. And the neighbour thought of what he saw on May morning, and he began to talk, and it wasn't long at all until word of all this came to the Bishop of Ossory, an Englishman, and a tough man, a Franciscan, and there were no easy crowd at the time. His name was Richard de Lederer. Now, of course, his first reaction was, there'll be no witchcraft in my diocese. And he sat himself down and he wrote a letter to Dublin to the Lord Chancellor's office. But sure, I suppose the civil service being then what the civil service is now, the boys in Dublin were asleep and he got no reply to his letter. But someone knew he had it written because a short time after that, Richard de Lederer was visiting the Abbey of Kells. Some business with the abbot. And when he was leaving on his way home, he was surrounded on the road by a crowd of evil-looking men. And they said to him, So, you'd have our mistress put in jail, would you? You'd have her condemned as a witch. Well, we'll see how you like it yourself. And they carried him off to the forest of Meath and put him into a house there in the forest under lock and key and kept him there severely for two weeks. But as everyone knows, bishops are not as ordinary men. They have bigger purses for one thing and Richard de Lederer was able to bribe the guards with gold. <laughs> and he got away. And this time he said, I'll make no mistake and don't mind this post to Dublin. He went to Dublin himself to the Chancellor's office. John Darcy was the man in the office at the time. The bishop burst in and he says, Look, Chancellor, what are you going to do about these scandalous affairs? That a bishop in this kingdom, he can't go about his business without being set upon by bandits, robbers and witches. What are you going to do? Well, of course, John Darcy, <clears throat> when it was put to him like that, he had to do something. And he says, All right, look, look, I'll come to Kilkenny myself. Call the court, call the witnesses and bring the accused and we'll see what can be done. He was as good as his word because a short time later he arrived in Kilkenny and the court was in session. Of course, Alice Kittler and Petronilla de Meath were brought in and Alice was put up in the accused box. 
John Darcy looked at her and he says, Madam Kittler, you know the charges against you, heinous crimes. You know the penalty for such crimes? What have you to say for yourself? Never a word did she say, only looked out of her beautiful face and her cold eyes at all the people in that court. Oh, the people of the town were there, and the bishop in all his robes in the front row. No reply, like I say. So John Darcy says to her, All right, if you say nothing in your own defence, we'll see what your accusers say. Bring on the first witness. And the witness was brought, none other than her neighbour who saw her out the window on May morning. Sat in the witness box, and the judge says to him, No, tell us what you heard, and tell us what you saw on May morning. And the witness there sat, and he cringing now under the hard glare of Alice Kittler, and he says, Well, Your, your Honour, I, I saw her brushing the street, and she was all the time saying, To the house of Robert, my son, come all the wealth of Kilkenny town. What more do we need to hear, says the judge? Have you anything to say in your defence now? No. No word at all from Alice Kittler. All right, says he. And he reached for the black patch. He put it on his head and he said, you know what this is for? I'm going to pronounce a sentence on you that you won't like if you don't speak now. Never a word from Alice Kittler. He put on the black patch and he declared, you have been accused of witchcraft and you have been convicted by your own silence and I sentence you and your accomplice and any others that will be found to have been in your pay to death this day two weeks by burning in the street outside this courthouse. There was great noise in the court, of course, a lot of murmuring and muttering and a pleased look on the bishop's face. That was all right. There was still no word from Alice and the judge says, clear the court. Guards, take the prisoners to the dungeons. And as the guards came, Alice Kittler stood up for the first time and she looked at her neighbour and she said, You, you won't be here to see me burning in two weeks' time. The guards came and herself and Petronilla were carried to the condemned cell and a cold place it was, thick walls, small barred window and an iron door and very little furniture, a small stool and a piece of straw in the corner as a bed. They all went home, and the neighbour went home. He went to bed that night, but if he did, he got these pains in his stomach in the middle of the night, like people would be sticking knives into him. He screamed, of course, Ow! <coughs> and the servants came in, Master, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? They're killing me, they're killing me. He says, get the doctor, get the priest. And the doctor and the priest were called, and the doctor could do little, and the priest could do little more. That man never saw the morning light, but back at the jail, all was quietness. Alice Kittler pretended nothing if she was responsible. Days passed, and finally the morning for the execution came. The mayor of the town gathered all the people that dared to come out, and he arrived in his robes with his scroll in his hand, and to the crowd that were there, he announced, be it known to all that I, by the grace of God, mayor of this town of Kilkenny, do hereby order in the name of the powers spiritual and temporal of this kingdom that the said Alice Kittler and Petronella of Meath be brought forth to this place that the sentence of the court be carried out. Guards, bring forth Petronella de Meath. And the guards clanked into the jail and brought Petronella de Meath out as white as her shirt, tied her to the stake, lit the blaze, and she made but a poor battle indeed. And when that business was done, the mayor said, Guards, bring forth Alice Kittler. And they walked in again to the jail, to the condemned cell. But as they went along the corridor, they felt the heat rising. And they felt, especially inside their armour, because they said, there's something wrong here. And there was something wrong, because when they came to the door, and the captain put his hand on the handle of the door to open it, he pulled it back with pain. It nearly burned the hand off of him. Hush, you see, there's a fire. Call the fire brigade. And they started passing in buckets of water from man to man, in and along the corridor, and threw them on the door, and shh, 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 the clouds of steam went up. And when the door was cooled down, the captain tried it again. He didn't want to get burned. And when it was cool, he says, give me the key. They gave him the key. He turned it, but it wouldn't turn. The lock was melted. Oh, says he, call a smith quick. The blacksmith came in with his sledgehammer and bang, bang, bang. 
You could hear the blows of iron echoing on steel out the corridor, and the people would say, what's going on in there? When the door finally collapsed in, they looked, crowded around. No sign of Alice Kidlet. The window was still in place, and only the marks of the fire up along the wall, and a smell of smoke. Get the bishop, they said. Get the bishop quick. He'll know what to do. Richard the Leatherer shouldered his way in and said, Ha-ha, says he. The old one came for her at last. And isn't it a true thing that the devil knows his own? I hope you'll all take a message from this. All I can say to you is that there are people in Kilkenny to this very day that believe that the old one did come for Alice Kittler. Whatever it was, she was never seen from that day out.